Bring your neck on his up. Start clapping, start clapping, start clapping, start clapping. Start clapping. Yeah, good job. First name, you know, 
For example, if I introduce myself, like, my name is Lisa, fuck you. Wow. I feel so empowered, you know? No, but, um, you know, in China, America, you guys' last name are global. You know what I'm saying? You're this room, I don't know how many people. I will bet nobody have the same last name. I mean, you guys just come from all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you want that? Besides husband, husband and wife, if you have the same last name, I'll give you $5. How about that? <laughs> yes. Uh, so my point is that's why the Chinese parents are pay a lot of attention on their baby's first name. Because the last name just, just they're the same, right? You know, nowadays, if people have money, the parents even spend $1,000 for a unique first name. You know, the, the, the lazy one, the lazy Chinese parents, they just gave their baby according to events, what's happening in the country, in the world. I'll give you an example. I have one uncle, his first name is Constitution. <laughs> so his name is a Liu Constitution. Wow. Another one is a liberation or something, you know. So I would say that if the Chinese parents live in America, based on the things that happened the last few years, 2020, I'm not sure they would go like pandemic. That's probably too extreme, yeah. But definitely the Chinese parents would have named their babies like Pfizer, you know, vaccine. <laughs> Vaccine is a good name, right? Yeah. Vaccine, yeah. 2021, I'll give you an example. 2021, I think insurrection will be a good cool name, right? Yeah, stop steal. Yeah, stop steal is a good name. Or crypto, crypto, Bitcoin. If you like those, those are very good cool names, yeah. 2022, this year. What uh, cool first name you can think of for Chinese kids? Yeah, I would think overturn. Overturn. Karen, oh, Karen, that's, yeah, that's your American name. <laughs> yeah, I think Americans, it's opposite. Our first name is fucking boring. Uh, I don't know how many Kevins in this room. I don't know. Bob, Tom, I don't know. So that's your tribe. That's your tribe, your first name. All right. Uh, yeah, thank you. So I gotta, I gotta move on, move on. Uh, so I uh, quit my day job in April this year. Yes, thank you. Department of Ecology of the state government, yeah. So uh, after I quit my job, because I have been doing a company on and off, like hobby thing for eight, nine years, right? So finally, you know what? This is it, I'm doing comedy. So my Chinese friend calls this, really? So again, why comedy? You know, I'm like, because I don't want to steal American jobs <laughs> you know, anymore, yeah. <laughs> I have my job, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guilty as charged. Yeah. I took out your white collar job. No. So another friend says, all right, all right, got it. You want to you know, pursue a dream, you know, comedy. All right, yeah. what is your inspiration? You know, I'm like, Ins my inspiration is uh, Shirley Temple. You know Shirley Temple, the movie child, movie star, right? Yeah, okay, the most of you are too young. You know that? Yeah, in the 50s, yeah, Charlie, I mean, Shirley Temple from three-year-old to 10-year-old. During the seven years, she made a 29 movie. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah Google that. Yeah, Google, yeah. So my first job I got when I was 22 years old, right out of college. I just feel like, wow, I'm missing out. I need to catch up with all that child labor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because in China, where child labor normally start like eight or nine years old, you know? In India, they start like probably five or six. Your American started at three. That's for a while. I got a lot of work to do. You know what I'm saying? All, all I'm doing is just catch up with a three-year-old. Okay? Yeah, I know. So, but but you know, like I said, before I quit my job, though, I was an engineer. You know, I, I just I, I worked for state for 20 plus years. Yes, I'm that old. Uh, but anyway, I saw that the times like okay, they hire me. Maybe they want to use my math skill because I do have an engineer degree. But no, no, never, never use my uh, math skill. 20 some years. Until one day, one day my uh, coworker was asked me the other day, like, Yin, I want to ask you a question. Math question, very embarrassing. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I, mean, I did not tell anybody until today, okay? <laughs> so she said, she said, how do you convert 75% to a fraction? 
I'm like, wow, really? She didn't know that. She has master degree, something. I don't know what it is. Uh, so I said, okay, uh, 75% is three quarter. She said, three quarter and 75 cents. Oh my God, it's three over four. <laughs> exactly, yes. She didn't know that. So I gave her more example how to convert 15% to fraction, you know, like, okay. So, yeah, I am not surprised. Never use math skills, but the skill I need to master that I figured out 20 some years is jargon and acronym. Yeah, the state government, they like, they like jargon, they like acronym, you know? I'll give you an example, you like, the top secret that I know of you guys, America, is in the poop water, okay? I'm, I'm in the wastewater business. <laughs> Yeah, plan IPS not on get out my business, you know. I know you put water TSS, BOD, TSS, total suspended solid, TDS, total dissolved solid. You know, I, I can go on and on all day long, right? But my favorite acronym is BPJ. Because everybody asks, how do you do a job? BPJ. How do you do how do you get that conclusion? BPJ. You know what BPJ is? BPJ means Best professional judgment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can all use that, you know. BPJ, yeah, all day long. Uh, my son one time said, I could do BPJ. You know, uh, uh, I said, like, how? He said, I could do peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> That's not even that exact, but close enough, close enough, all right? BPJ, like I know, yeah, I, I don't follow the WAC, the RCW, the EPA. Once again, I'm all my chart, but that's all how we talk, you know, at, at work. Okay, nobody, that's boring, okay, nobody laughed that, all right. <laughs> moving on, uh, moving on. So uh, another thing that, uh, my Spokane is our original office. In that building, we have 160 some people. I was only Asian working in that building. And we don't even have black people. <laughs> Now you know how white that building is, right? But I have not really paid attention. I didn't know life's any different. Maybe I'm just not that self-aware. Until pandemic hit. So pandemic, everybody worked from home, right? So once in a while, like a few months, we need to have a all staff meeting. So we're logging on, the all staff meeting, but then nobody is showing their faces. Everybody just is a black screen. The black squares, right? Looking out with your name on it. So I sit back looking at all the sea of black squares with name on it. All of a sudden I notice, wow, all of the names, like five names Kevin, four names Karen, just one yay foo, basically, like, wow, fuck you, that's my name, right? So when I look at his name, I'm like, wow. Am I the diversity hire? What's going on? <laughs> then I start thinking, I'm like, all right, you know, I'm out of here. Now they're 100% white in that building in Spokane. Spokane is 88% white in the city. That building was 99%. Now I left. <laughs> now they're 100%. Wow. The white color jobs. <laughs> so I have no regret. No regret. Rather to tell dick jokes in a bar like this. You know? <laughs> and, uh, so uh, uh, another thing about me is I'm a single mother. Yes, my whole family is here. Wow, my son, my daughter in this room. Uh, don't check their ID, okay? Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm a single mother. My youngest, 19 year old, he's at the University of Washington, a sophomore this year. Yeah, but. <laughs> At uh, 17 year old, just one day he just uh, come home and decided to call me bruh. So like, what's up, bruh? <laughs> so at first I don't know how to react. He was like, whoa, bruh, what's going on? Then I realized bruh was actually a promotion from a homie. <laughs> yeah, because he had been calling me homie for a while, right? So every day is bruh this and bruh that. It's like. Taco Tuesday, can I get 10 bucks, bruh? <laughs> yeah, so the only time he call me mom is when uh, he comes home at dinner time, like, hey, what's up, dinner mom? Is dinner ready, mom? So when I hear that, it's like, I was like, I don't know, bruh. <laughs> yeah, why don't you cook your own dinner, bruh? <laughs> so he had to be cooking a lot of ramen noodles, man. Right? It's got him ready for college, yeah. So last year, last year he did graduate from uh, high school. 
So we went to shopping because he wanted his clothes, you know, new. I don't know why. I don't send him the new shoes, new clothes, new pants. So we went to uh, JCPenney and, and, uh, and Coase. Those are my favorite stores. <laughs> so we're going to load it up. I don't know how many, how many dollars of stuff in the, in the shopping cart. So at the checkout, you know, I'm like, wow, I, I don't want to pay that. That's looking like a lot, right? So he look at me, I look at him, nobody paying. Then all of a sudden he said, that's on you, dog. <laughs> wow, so now I'm dog. <laughs> First time I heard that, I'm like, dog business, I don't know. So I asked the cashier, like, is a dog good thing or bad thing? <laughs> so the cashier said, oh, dog definitely is good. It's good. Man, so I just got promoted again. I'm like, I just paid it. Man, I was just stupid. Because I already gave him all the credit cards, the bank account. You know, man, I just... I, I guess parents were suckers for all the promotions, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so uh, that's, uh, and uh, what else I want to say? Uh, I, I know, I, one thing was very embarrassing, I don't know, but this is bar, maybe I should say it. Uh, right. I know, okay. <laughs> so during pandemic, you know, like my son was uh, 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 17, right? You, I don't know, there, me, look at me, guys. Look at me. Uh, I feel like I am at my peak. What do you think? I am at my peak. Yeah. I'm talking about sexual peak, right? Right. You know, and, and uh, my son, 17 year old. What, what do you, Americans say, 17 year old boy and 19 teen year old. They are at their peak. Do you agree with me? No? No, they're at their peak. I'm, my point, I, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. Wow, now. We got two people at their peak. We're locked down together 24-7. I know, I, I came out of the bathroom, boom, he's there. I came out of the kitchen, boom, he's there. You know, and then the, nobody getting out. Or the pandemic is like, wow. You know, that's very frustrating, very frustrating, you know, because guess what? I can't hate on him. This is not a bar, this is not a bar. I'm talking about, you know, the chemistry in the air. <laughs> Two people at their peak. Remember that? Yeah, but then uh, last year, though, 2021, he turned 18. Woo! Yeah, it's legal now. Legal. Right? Legal. Oh. Yeah, so. Wow. <laughs> this is not a bar. This is, looks like a church or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is that don't worry, guy. Jeez, I'm not fucking him. Man. Yeah. Don't worry, okay? Don't worry. I'm just saying, very frustrating. Very frustrating. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. So let's let's calm down. Like I want to say though, uh, one thing. I am America. Okay, don't worry. Yeah, I, I'm American by choice. That's American by choice. You know. When I say that, when I say that, I feel like I'm like I'm a born again Christian. Wow, you better think about. Not like my two kids, my daughter and my son. Like I just my water broke. Go to the hospital. Boom. They are American by chance. Wow. That's no brainer. That's so weak. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when I say I am American by choice in 2003, I mean literally, Woo! I have to give up my Chinese passport. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because China is a country. They don't like that you're loyal to two tribes. You have to pick a team. Yeah, yeah you have to pick a team, right? So after I pick, Team USA, USA! Tana said, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so I did, I got out. You know what I mean? Is I sent in my passport before I get my American green card thing. So they cut it up, a corner, and send them back. You know? Yeah. So now in America, you know, easy for me to say now, there was a real struggle 2003 and my home family back in China. I remember my mom called me in 2003. And she said, Ying, you have a green card already, right? So that you can travel back and forth freely between the US and China. Why do you want to uh, be in America? You, you want to vote? You want a uh, democracy? Is that what it is? You know, at, at the time, I, I don't want to argue with her because I already made up my mind. So I just said, yeah, I want to vote. So my mom voted me out of her will. <laughs> yeah. She voted first. Yeah, I know. See, at the time, though, I was like, who wants her shitty apartment? You know, sure. Let her have it. You know, but now 
almost 20 years later, her uh, shithole apartment was almost $1 million. Yeah. <laughs> and between my mom and dad, they have three apartments in Beijing, China. Yeah, almost the second expensive uh, city in the world, you know, after Hong Kong, yeah. So three million some dollars, I'm out, right? Um, but, but still, I feel like my brother's the worst. My older brother, you know, he called me, he said, you're a traitor, wow, he called me a traitor. You know? He said, don't come back, just stay in the United States. So that's why, guys, I love this country, because we already have a traitor. <laughs> yeah, his name is Trader Joe. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Some people don't get confused. They get it's not the Joe in the White House, okay? That's not, and once some get some organic shit, and all of a sudden the Joe taking all the blames for, for our traders, yeah. Uh, another thing I want to share with you there's a, like a lot of culture shock that all these years I live in this country. One of the culture shock I experienced is uh, this ass culture you got going here. You know what I'm saying? Ass is big deal. Yeah, ass is big, big culture, right? Yeah. So when I was in New York City, uh, January this year, when I talked about this ass culture thing, there's audience in the in the front row, and he said, "Yeah," he said. Oh, I eat ass, wow. So I'm like, okay, okay, wow, that is not where I'm going. But because somebody brought it up, the, the eating ass thing, so like, let me address that head on, okay? Because, you know, not long ago, when we say to somebody, kiss my ass, it's a bad thing, right? It's a bad thing, you know, it's like, you're meant to humiliate somebody, right? So eat my ass, but like, but no. Eat my ass though, it's a love, <laughs> right? Meant to, you know, you have to love somebody to get them to eat it, or, or you want to eat somebody, you're gonna love them. So I'm saying, what happened? Between kiss my ass is bad, but eat my ass is love. <laughs> what happened, America? Was, should we have something in between? Just to, and like, how about finger my ass? Maybe we need a translation or something. I don't know what happened in this country. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, if that is the case, next time if I'm mad at somebody, you know, all I gotta do, just tell him, says, eat my ass, right? Then I'll never be happy, right? He think, wow, you know, he think I like him, love him. I'm like, I gotta keep it, right? Because I meant to say kiss my ass, but yeah. So work out, war peace. We have war peace. Um, so let me get back to the ass culture. I was really want to talk about it. Okay? This ass culture thing it was like, American women all want to have this big ass, right? Big, really curvy ass. You know, I think for the black people, they naturally have that big one. It's it's fine. I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'm all for it. But white woman, you know, like I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian's white, right? And Nicki Minaj, Nick, Nicki Minaj, she thinks she's white, but she's black. Right? Yeah, and and Cardi B, these three women, they're beautiful, they're rich, but you guess what? They all spend hundreds of dollars to get fit. Plastic ass. I don't get it. I'm like, why? Is that a, a man think that is uh, sexy or something? What's going on? You guys think that's sexy? The big No? Yes? Yes. I'm like, whoa, but but uh, how you fuck that thing? You know? You can't even find the asshole. Really, really. You really have to get it. You know what I'm saying? The, the reason I keep bringing up this ice culture thing is because it affected my life. Yeah, it really did. Because Asian people will have a flat ass, right? We have a flat ass. And I have a, I'm a single mother, just said it. I had two failed relationships. And I, I don't know why, but this are two, my, my ex are both white guys, you know? No matter what we're arguing, talking about, they always, because look at your black, you know, flat ass. Wow, <laughs> everything like that. I was like, you haven't mowed the grass for three months. And what's going on? He said, look at your flat ass. It's all my flat ass wrong. You know, it's all my fault. You know, so I said, okay. You know what? Uh, after my first divorce, I'm like, I do need to improve myself, all right? But I don't have a hundred thousand dollars. You know, so I was like, my friend says, 